Hello guys, happy Lunar New Year, Alan Ron is here, and welcome back with another episode from Game Fear Army. And today we're gonna take a look at a really new and potential game that has just released the official game a week ago. It's Gunstar Metaver. I've played through this game a lot and I found that it's really interesting and fun to play, and also can make some considerable profit for you. Today I will show you how to get started with the game, the fundamental information that you need to understand, some basic tips on how to play this game efficiently, and the most important one, the expected return on investment in this game. Remember I have put some timestamp in the video timeline, but this video contains lots of important information, so watching the whole way through would be the best for your understanding. So let's get right into it, shall we? So if you aren't familiar with the project in the first place, you can refer to my last video project review in order to understand the project as much as you can. I will put the link on the top right corner of this video. So one thing I should know for you guys is that this game is free to play, but it's not free to earn. It means that you can have a non-NFT characters and you can start to play the game and earn some GSC through B2 emotes, but you cannot withdraw them only when you can have at least 2 NFTs in your wallet that you can make some profit. Remember that, it's really important. So when first get into the game, you can start playing the game right away by going to the website gunstar.io and click on play, connect to your wallet, create an account, and you will get into the main lobby. You will get a free non-empty pet, this little cute chicken, and you can start playing the campaign mode. My recommendation is just using this free NFT just to test the game. Only when you like the game and feel like you can play this game all the day, then consider investing because this game requires a lot of skills and strategies and I think they may not be suitable for many people. So just try it for once. So right now if you want to have an NFT, you can go to the marketplace tabs and start searching for some pests or some eggs to open a random two NFTs. I will explain to you some basic information about the NFT pass system here for you to understand and make better investment decisions. So basically, there are 7 types of rarity in this game, from trial to ascent. Trial is a little cute chicken that I have mentioned before, and right now we only have about 7 pets, from normal to elite. There will be more pets and more rarities in the future, so players can have a really diverse collection of pets. But one thing you should understand is that, the rarities aren't the most important thing in this game, they're not. Because all rarities here are built pretty equally in power. A normal pet in the hands of skilled players can win against pets of the higher rarities. So the game is more skill based rather than based on how much money you can spend. The higher rarity pets can have more unique skill and capable of dealing more damage when used correctly. But if you don't master it, it might become a real problem. This is my personal rank of difficulty level of pets in this version based on my own experience. So it might not be true to many people but I think it can help you to have an overview of what you can expect from using this NFT pass. Moving on, each pass also has their own skill that you can use in a battle. Currently they got up to 3 skills. The skill 1 deals the lowest damage and also the lowest delay count or you can call the normal attack. Skill 2 medium damage, medium delay count. And the last one, the skill 3, the ultimate skill. And definitely they have the highest damage, but also the highest delay count. We also got the passive skill that adds some additional effects for the pets or the team. So you may don't know what delay count is. This is a really important factor as the gameplay of Gunstar Metaverse is turn based combat. So whenever you use skill 2 or the ultimate skill, you deal more damage to the enemies, right? But you will lose your turns and your enemies will have more turns to fight you. Interesting, right? So you must plan your attack wisely. Don't just use the skill blindly or you will die first. Trust me. We also got the damage range for the skills. The bed in here is really interesting as they all have a range of value for all the stats. So for example with whole riding here, you can see that this is the lowest damage the skills can deal and this is the highest. If you shoot the enemies from the high angle, you can possibly hit up to the highest damage. And you know each of the whole riding in Gunstar Metaverse may have a different range from this one. So like I got another example from another whole riding here. 
it got lower range of skill 1, but higher range for skill 2, so the skill 2 of this whole riding would definitely be stronger than the other. But the thing is, the stronger the skill, the higher the delay count. So like the skill 2 of this whole riding deal more damages, but it's likely that this whole will lose more turns than the other. That's how it works. So the highest damage may not always be the right answers. So it's often pretty hard to judge whether this horde is stronger than this one. It really depends on how you would like to use them in the battle. So you must consider carefully to choose your path perfectly. So moving on, each pet will have 6 basic start, HP, health points, defense, attack, critical chance, critical damage, movements. I think you guys are so familiar with this. Movement is actually how far you are able to move per turn. It's, it's not that important. And they also got their own range of star, making the pet system really diverse. When leveling up your pets, your best HP and the 3 skills will be increased by a base of 5% and the other start like defense, critical chain, etc. will have their own points to be added later on. That's just the general start that you need to look at when searching for pets. And each type of pets here, they got a bunch of complicated data and damage range that you can look at on the white paper. But I will give you an overview of these pets, the strong point, the weakness, the unique in the battle. So firstly, the elite one, Bowerving, is the hardest pet but really useful if you can master the pest as it can deal tons of damage over an area so it can attack the whole group of enemies at the same time Warfing is another pet that can deal high damage with all the skill but also the lowest health among all the pets we have It got the ultimate skill that can deal massive damages but you will need to aim for a higher angle as it need about 1.5 seconds to activate and split into 5 more bullets Hole Riding is one of my favorite as it has a pretty nice balance between damage, health, defense. It specializes in multiple shots with a high chance of critical hits and damages. It's great for those feeling lucky and wanting to do some Terran destruction. Each of the best has its own advantages and you know I have published some posts on our telegram channel about this. So you can refer to that by searching the hashtag Gunstar on our telegram channel. I put the post link in this video below so you can check it out yourself. So you may understand the pet system here, let's get right into the game. So as you can see here, this is the main lobby of Gunstar Metaverse. And in the lower bar here, we got the pet tabs here. That include all the pets that you got in here. Right now I got the whole riding and two people thing. One rare and two normals. And you can click on this transfer pet to transfer your pet from the marketplace to the game and vice versa. We also got the inventory tabs here that you can look up to special items to use in the game, some detail about this. But also the quests in here that you can earn some additional GSC. And furthermore, we also got a really interesting activities, the fortune wheel, that you can spin this and get some special items. It costs about 300 GSC, which is quite a bit expensive right now for me. Because you already got this from the campaign mode. And in the upper left right here, you can see the profile that including some information about your current experience, your history, tickets, win loss. This is the rider, and this is your pet, and the level of your rider is different from the level of your pet. Remember that. So the highest possible level of your pets is based on your rider current level. So for example, my rider is currently at level 9, then the max level for my pet would be at level 9. If your rider is not level 10, you cannot level up your pet to level 10. So remember that. And they will need GSC in order to level up. So you always need to repair some GSC on hand. But one thing you should aware is that if you transfer your pet from the marketplace, or all the accounts, but the level of your pets is higher than the rider level of that account, it will decrease the level of your pets to the same level as your rider. So like if your pets level is 9 and you transfer to another account in which the rider is on level 5, so that your pet will return to level 5, and you will have to use ESC to level up all again. That's so terrifying, right? So be careful with that. And now let's get right into the campaign mode. The map in Gunstar Metaverse is really really large. I think I will need a few months in order to complete all of this. 
The game lab gunstar metaverse is super easy. I have talked about this a lot in my last videos. Please refer to this in order to know how to play the game. The game is really based on the skill of the players, so yeah, I recommend to start trying with your free NFT chicken here. And buy some NFTs if you feel confident enough. The game right now doesn't have the training room for us, but I think that we open soon so that new gamers can train and build up their skill during the fight. And this is really crucial for your main earning. Each of the map will cost you about 2 tickets, as you can see here, and 1 pet energy. The maximum of tickets in your account is 18 tickets, but you guys can get up to 36 tickets in a day when it recharges fully. Each of the pet will have a total of 3 energy, and it will take about 4 hours to recharge 1 energy. So, 12 hours to recharge fully. Another important thing that you guys should check is that you will only need to battle with maps that have the same level as your rider level or higher to receive massive profit. Like, if you can see, if your rider level is higher than the recommended level of the map, the allocation of GSC reward will be cut down from 50% to 100%. So for example, like the recommended level of this map is level 10, but my rider level is only at level 9, so I still can earn up to 100 GSC. But when I get to lower level math like, like this one, it's recommended at only level 8. So the, uh, the rewards will be only 50 GSC. So this mechanism is aimed to deter higher level characters that may take all the reward from the new players and prevent the high inflation of GSC. So I think that's all you need to know about the campaign mode. We also got the boss hunt and the B2B mode, the arena, that is expected to be released in the future, so let's wait for it. In order to play the game efficiently, getting the maximum of your profit, and also don't get the frustrating feeling inside when you almost can win the battle, but just lost in the few final seconds. Trust me, you don't want that feeling. So I have prepared some basic tips that I think it would be really helpful for you guys to get through the campaign more efficiently. So tips number 1, only use the skills to finish off the enemies. Remember the delay count that I have mentioned to you before? These factors affect your battle performance a lot. When you use the skill that have higher damages, the enemy will have more turn to fight you. Usually the skill 2 will give the enemies one more turn and the ultimate skill is 2 more turns. But remember that it will keep equally to every enemy in the match. So like if you're fighting 3 enemies and you use the ultimate skill, each boss will get 2 more turns, which is sick in total. Man, it's not worth it. Your bet would probably be die before that. Therefore, I believe it's better for you to only the skill 1 and then the skill 2 or the ultimate skill to finish them off. Don't use the skill when there are too many enemies and you cannot destroy anyone with those skills because it's not worth it to exchange your health. I think the delay is really general so it's up to you to figure it out through your experience with your pets. The damage rank is really important for these factors. So moving on about a second tip. Level up your pets to the recommended level. So for example, like the current map recommends you to have the pet level 9 so you guys can consider to level up the main pet to that level in order to have higher chance of winning the battle. It may cost lots of GSC, but trust me, you guys can have more benefits as you can increase your higher rate of winning and also get some more items. Through my own experience, I feel like when your pet level is the same as the recommended level of the map, the enemy bot are kinda more absurd, like they miss the shot more often compared to when you get into the map that has a higher level Yo, the bot are kinda like a bro shooter. I don't know if it's true or not, but that's what I get from my observations. So recommend to level up regularly to have more chance to win the battle and get the rewards. So don't try to get into the map that has a higher recommended level as you might get lost and lose a lot of energy and ticket per day unless you are super bro or your pets have some certain effects in that specific map. Like I can use my Raiden Team level 3 to get through the map 115 at ease. And the final tip, at least 3 pets in order to maximize your profit and the campaign progress. Remember the ticket system? There's up to 36 tickets per day 
and in bed we have three energies that take about 12 hours to recharge. Based on this calculation, I recommend you guys to have about 3 pets in order to maximize the number of tickets, about 36 tickets per day, so you can play about 2 times a day and can maximize your earnings. You can also maximize the use of all the tickets with only 2 pets, but you have to play many turns in the day, and also timing the perfect time to play, which is impossible. So I think 3 pets will be better for you to play completely. Now we move to one of the most important sections, my return on investment in this game. Well, to be honest, Gunstar Metaverse right now cannot give you a decent profit from playing the B2E mode. The main revenue for the game is Arena mode, which will be released in the upcoming month. So when getting into Gunstar Metaverse this time, don't expect to earn some huge profit from this game. This is just a time for preparations of the upcoming B2B mode. You use ESC to level up your pets, make them stronger, participate in B2B and climb up higher in ranking. That's where you can make some huge income from this game. So my recommendation is that if you're confident about this project, you love the game, you believe the game development in the long term, then consider investing and building your own strong team to prepare for the arena mode. The person who get in first will probably make the most money out of it. Not financial advice, please. Well, that is all I would like to say on how to get started with Gunstar Metaverse. Some really useful tips on how to play the game like a pro. Not a pro, but decent enough. If you have any questions, please comment below to let us know and we can have some discussions. To me, still, Gunstar Metaverse is a potential gaming project with a strong and determined team behind. The game is really great. Nowadays, there are so many boring Blade games and people just focus on making money and forget the core thing of gaming, entertainment. This is what a good game should look like. So I'm really looking forward for this game in the future. If you like this video, don't forget to like and subscribe to catch up with new weekly episodes. And also follow our Twitter and Telegram because we're having some really useful tips and updates about this game. Again, I'm Alan Ron from Game Free Army and see you in the next episode. Bye bye. <laughs>